Anytime that we're approaching the Quran, first thing to do is to grab ablution. It's called wudu. And set your intention straight so that you're seeking knowledge from the most merciful, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Once your intention is good, uh, before you begin, you want to seek refuge from the accursed shaitan by saying, Awudu billahi minash shaitan rajim, bismillahir rahmanir rahim. Perfect. So without further ado, let's just go ahead and uh, jump straight into the reading. All right, bismillah. So who is more unjust than one who lies about Allah and denies the truth when it has come to him? Is there not in hell a residence for the disbelievers? And remember, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, labels the people that are upon disbelief consequentially the ones that are perpetual and vehement deniers, meaning that they've received signs from within themselves and they've also received signs that they can understand from outside of themselves, but they persist in their disbelief. So uh, he's reinforcing this here, meaning that um, these people and mankind as a whole, the game is rigged in their favor with just how much signs that they receive. But the ones that are sincere and truthful will accept it. And the ones that are upon disbelief, insincere, uh, liars, and fit all the negative characteristics of a disbeliever, such as arrogance, um, such as um, uh, un injustice, uh, someone that is you know, um, finding a way to weasel themselves here and there. Uh, these are all the characteristics upon disbelief. And I encourage you to check out all of the uh, previous lessons that we gathered from the previous readings to get a, a full comprehensive look, right? So Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is reminding us here again that uh, the destination is a fitting recompense, okay? And the one who has brought the truth, i.e. the Prophet, alayhi salatu salam, uh, and they who believe in it, those are the righteous. And again, the righteous also have very many qualities, very many characteristics, and a, their righteousness and their belief is a consequence of them staying true to those qualities in face of adversity. They will have whatever they desire with their Lord. <clears throat> that is the reward of the doers of good, that Allah may remove from them the worst of what they did and reward them their due for the best of what they used to do. Now, obviously, as believers, we really uh, uh, cherish the fact that we have such a merciful Lord that would not only rig the game in our favor to win as mankind, but also um, when we commit good deeds, we are amply rewarded for those good deeds. And then um, the mistakes that we used to make Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala will shield us from those mistakes and cover those mistakes. So the old philosophy of if you want to judge others with mercy, then uh, the king of judges will judge you with mercy. And if you want to judge others based on like a one for one strict justice, no mercy whatsoever, then uh, the most just will judge you in that manner. And I would highly recommend that you take the path of mercy. Is not Allah sufficient for his servant, i.e. Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wasallam, and yet they threaten you with those they worship other than him. And whoever Allah leaves astray, for him there is no guide. And whoever Allah guides for him, there is no misleader. Is not Allah exalted in might and owner of retribution? And if you ask them, who created the heavens and the earth, they would surely say Allah, Say, then have you considered what you invoke besides Allah? If Allah intended me harm, are, there in, are they removers of his harm? Or if he intended me mercy, are they withholders of his mercy? Say, sufficient for me is Allah. Upon him alone rely the wise reliers. So either you're going to rely on circumstance, or you're going to rely on your own desires, or you're going to rely on your own intuitions, or false deities, uh, or you're going to rely on the one that is actually worth being relied upon. Say, O oh my people, work according to your position, for indeed I am working and you are going to know. To whom will come a torment disgracing him, on whom will descend an enduring punishment. All right, carrying on. Indeed, we sent down to you the book of the people in truth. So whoever is guided, it is for the benefit of his soul. 
and whoever goes astray only goes astray to its detriment. And you are not a manager, i.e. authority over them. Law takes the souls at the time of their death, and those that do not die he takes during their sleep. Then he keeps them for which he has decreed death and releases the others for a specific term. Indeed, and in that are signs for people who give thought. Uh, I'm definitely going to check out the Tefsid on this one because I think it's uh, it might contain a golden nugget for us. But remember, in Islam, sister, uh, the sister of death is sleep. And naturally, who is taking care of your body as well as your organs when you're unconscious, right? So only the sustainer and the provider. In the same way that he sustained you during uh, your, um, while you were in your mother's womb, right? Uh, that is the same way that he's sustaining you during your sleep amongst uh, every other time in existence. Okay, here's what a he has to say. Here, Los Panatha tells us that it is he alone who controls people's affairs, both when they are awake and when they are asleep, when they are alive and when they die. Allah takes people's soul at the time of their death. The fact that he attributes this action to himself does not contradict the fact that he has appointed the angel of death and his helpers to do this task. As he says elsewhere, say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the angel of death who has been given charge of you will take your souls in death. And that's in Surah Sajda, 32, uh, chapter 32, verse 11. Then when death comes to one of you, our envoys, a.k.a. the angels, take his soul and they never fail in their duty. And that's a Surah Al-Anam, uh, chapter 661. Because he may attribute things to himself in the sense that he is the creator and controller thereof, or he may attribute them to their causes in the sense that it is his way and wisdom to make a cause for everything. And he takes the souls of the living when they sleep. This is the lesser death. He takes the souls of living when they sleep. Then he keeps of the two categories of souls, the souls of those for whom he has decreed death. This refers to both those uh, who die when they are awake and those for whom it is decreed that they should die in their sleep. And he sends the other back for an appointed term. That is until they have received their allotted provision in full and their appointment, uh, their appointed time has come to an end. Keep in mind that in Islam, the rizq or the provision that's provided for you, you're not going to get an ounce more or an ounce less, like not even an iota more, an iota less. Exactly what was destined for you is exactly what you're going to get. Surely in that there are signs for people who reflect upon the perfect nature of Allah's might and his ability to bring the dead back to life. This verse indicates that the ruh or nafs, the soul, is an independent entity the essence of which is different from that of the body. It is created and controlled by Allah when he takes it and either keeps it or sends it back. The souls of the living and the dead meet and converse in al-barzakh. Then Allah sends back the soul of the living and keeps the soul of the dead. Now, naturally, there's probably going to be a, a natural inquisition towards like dreams and what happens and, and all that stuff. So um, it's not mentioned here at the, at the tafsir for this particular verse. However, um, I do encourage you, if it's something that interests you, to take a look at scholarly work when it comes to that stuff. Uh, but I also caution you because you're going into the realm of the unseen and uh, you can go down a rabbit hole if you don't have proper guidance. All right, carrying on. Or have they taken other than Allah as intercessors? Say, even though they do not possess power over anything, nor do they reason. Say to Allah belongs the right to allow intercession entirely. To him belongs the dominion of the heavens and the earth. Then to him you will be returned. And when Allah is mentioned alone, the hearts of those who do not believe in the hereafter shrink with aversion. But when those worshipped other than him are mentioned, immediately they rejoice. Say, O Allah, creator of the heavens and the earth, knower of the unseen and the witnessed, you will judge between your servants concerning that over which they used to differ. And if those who did wrong had all that is in the earth entirely and the like of it with it, they would attempt to ransom themselves thereby from the worst of the punishments on the day of resurrection. And there will appear to them from a law that which they had not taken into account.
carrying on, and there will appear to them the evils they had earned, and they will be enveloped by what they used to ridicule. And when adversity touches man, he calls upon us. Then, when we bestow on him a favor from us, he says, I have only been given it because of my knowledge. Rather, it is a trial, but most of them do not know. Those before them had already said it, but they were not availed by what they used to earn. And the evil consequences of what they earn struck them. And those who have wronged of these people will be struck, i.e. afflicted, by the evil consequences of what they earned, and they will not cause failure. And again, this is an attestation to when Allah Pantala says the things that you're doing with your own hands, right? So the actions that you're taking uh, is this consequence. Do they not know that Allah extends provision for whom he wills and restricts it? Indeed, in that are signs for a people who believe. Say, O oh, my servants who have transgressed against themselves by sinning, do not despair of the mercy of Allah. Indeed, Allah forgives all sins. Indeed, it is he who is the forgiving, the merciful. And return in repentance to your Lord and submit to him before the punishment comes upon you. Then you will not be helped. And follow the best of what was revealed to you from your Lord, i.e. the Qur'an, before the punishment comes upon you suddenly while you do not perceive. Lest a, a soul should say, oh, how great is my regret over what I neglected in regard to Allah and that I was among the mockers. Carrying on. <clears throat> Or lest it should say, if only Allah had guided me, I would have been among the righteous. Or lest it should say, when it sees the punishment, if only I had another turn, so I could be among the doers of good. But yes, there had come to you my verses, but you denied them and were arrogant, and you were among the disbelievers. And on the day of resurrection, you will see those who lied about Allah with their faces blackened. Is there not in hell a residence for the arrogant? And Allah will save those who feared him by their attainment. No evil will touch them, nor will they grieve. Allah is the creator of all things, and he is over all things, disposer of affairs. To him belong the keys of the heavens and the earth. And they who disbelieve in the verses of Allah, it is those who are the losers. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, is it other than Allah that you order me to worship, O oh, oh, ignorant ones? And it was already revealed to you and to those before you that if you should associate anything with Allah, your work would surely become worthless and you would surely be among the losers. Rather, worship only Allah and be among the grateful. They have not appraised Allah with true appraisal while the earth entirely will be within his grip on the day of resurrection and the heavens will be folded in his right hand exalted is he and high above what they associate with him and the horn will be blown and whoever is in the heavens and whoever is on the earth will fall dead except whom allah wills then it will be blown again and at once they will be standing looking on and the earth will shine with the light of its Lord, and the record of deeds will be placed, and the prophets and the witnesses will be brought, and it will be judged between them in truth, and they will not be wronged. And every soul will be fully compensated for what it did, and he is most knowing of what they do. And those who disbelieved will be driven to hell in groups <clears throat> until when they reach it, its gates are opened, and its keepers will say, did there not come to you messengers from yourselves reciting to you the verses of your Lord and warning you of the meeting of this day of yours? They will say, yes, but the word, i.e. decree of punishment, has come into effect upon the disbelievers. To them it will be said, enter the gates of hell to abide eternally therein, and wretched is the residence of the arrogant." But those who feared their Lord will be driven to paradise in groups until when they reach it while its gates have been opened and its keepers say, peace be upon you, you have become pure, so enter it to abide eternally therein and they will enter. 
and they will say, praise to Allah who has fulfilled for us his promise and made us inherit the earth so we may settle in paradise wherever we will. And excellent is the reward of righteous workers. <clears throat> and you will see the angels surrounding the throne, exalting Allah with praise of their Lord, and it will be judged between them in truth, and it will be said, all praise to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Now keep in mind, this is a, a very, very heavy day. Okay. So even though that we're um, uh, reading it and just kind of proceeding forward, take a moment to really reflect on this because, uh, you know, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that the, the entirety of the heavens is going to basically be in his right hand, that means that it's so small and insignificant compared to him that it's not going to be fitting in the entirety of his right hand, right? It's going to be just like a, a, a figment of what, like a, a tiny little aota in his right hand, right? Because he is that much grander than his creation. Awesome. So <clears throat> carrying on to Surah Al-Khafir, Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Hamim. The revelation of the book, i.e. the Qur'an, is from Allah, the exalted in might, the knowing, <clears throat> the forgiver of sin, acceptor of repentance, severe in punishment, owner of abundance. There is no deity except him. To him is the destination. No one disputes concerning the signs of Allah except those who disbelieve. So be not deceived by their uninhibited movement throughout the land. Meaning they have freedoms, right? They have freedoms to move about. They have freedoms to to explore the land, they have freedoms to get the bounties of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, right? The people of Noah denied before them and the disbelieving factions after them, and every nation intended a plot for their messenger to seize him. And they disputed by using falsehood to attempt to invalidate thereby the truth. So I seized them, and how terrible, terrible was my penalty. And thus was the word, i.e. decree of your Lord, come into effect upon those who disbelieved that they are companions of the fire. Those angels who carry the throne and those around it exalt Allah with praise of their Lord and believe in him and ask forgiveness for those who have believed, saying, Our Lord, you have encompassed all things in mercy and knowledge. So forgive those who have repented and followed your way and protect them from the punishment of the hellfire. Our Lord, and admit them to gardens of perpetual residence, which you have promised them and whoever was righteous among their forefathers, their spouses and their offspring. Indeed, it is you who is the exalted in might, the wise, and protect them from the evil consequences of their deeds. And he whom you protect from evil consequences that day, you will have given him mercy, and that is the great attainment. Indeed, those who disbelieve will be addressed. The hatred of Allah for you was even greater than your hatred of yourselves. This day in hell, when you were invited to faith, but you disbelieved, i.e. refused. They will say, our Lord, you made us lifeless twice and gave us life twice, and we have confessed our sins. So is there to an exit any way? Uh, now, interesting here, potential um, another golden nugget. So let's take a look at the tafsir. Uh, we're going to get down to the um, 11th verse of Surah al -Ghafir. And let's see if Sadi can give us uh, any additional insights into this because it's saying that they were caused to be lifeless twice. I have an idea of kind of where it might go, but once again, it's it's better to uh, not speak from conjecture. <clears throat> okay. So it says here in a fo footnote, the first period of lifelessness is the initial period of development in the womb, which is referred to in uh, Surat al-Mu'minun. Then we made the drop of semen into a clinging clot. Then we made the clinging clot into a lump of flesh. Then we made the lump of flesh into bones and clothed the bones with flesh. And that's in Surah Al-Mu'minun 2314, until the soul is breathed into the fetus, whereupon it becomes alive. The second period of lifelessness follows death in this world and lasts until the day of resurrection. And um, that's from Ibn Ashur at Tafsir al-Muyasar. 
Uh, so that is actually a pretty good insight. Let's see if there's some additional information. They wish to go back to this world and was, will say, Our Lord, twice you have caused us to be lifeless, referring to the first death and the period between the two trumpet blasts, according to one view. So we have the view of the womb, and then we have the um, trumpet blasts, meaning that the uh, not only were you lifeless at one point, but then the trump trumpet blasted, you became uh, lifeless, and then... Uh, the trumpet, uh, part of the, the, that sequence of the trumpet is that you come back into existence. And then he also states here, or it may refer to the period of non-existence before they were brought into being. Then Allah caused them to die after he brought them into being. And twice you have brought us to life. This refers to life in this world and the life in the hereafter. Now uh, we acknowledge our sins. Is there a way to get out of the fire? That is, they will express regret, regret and say that but it will be to no avail and will not benefit them. They will be rebuked for not taking any measures that could lead to salvation, and it will be said to them, this is because when Allah alone was invoked, that is, when the call was made to affirm his oneness and strive for his sake alone, and it was forbidden to ascribe partners to him, you disbelieved. In him, your hearts shrank with aversion, and you found it extremely off-putting. So uh, just an absolute beautiful explanation once again. Uh, so let's bring it back to the Quran. <coughs> they will be told that is because when Allah was called upon you, uh, was called upon alone, you disbelieved. But if others were associated with him, you believed. So the judgment is with Allah, the most high, the grand. It is he who shows you his signs and sends down to you from the sky provision. But none will remember except he who turns back in repentance. So invoke Allah, being sincere to him in religion, although the disbelievers dislike it. He is the exalted above all degrees, owner of the throne. He places the inspiration of his command, i.e. revelation, upon whom he wills of his servants to warn of the day of meeting. The day they come forth, nothing concerning them will be concealed from Allah, to whom belongs all sovereignty this day. Uh, meaning there's a question. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is going to say, to whom belongs all sovereignty this day? To Allah, the one, the prevailing. Because obviously, uh, especially when the trumpet blows, uh, there's everything will cease to exist except for him, subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he's going to flex his might. And he's going to basically say, where are the kings today? Where are the rulers today? Where are your gods today? No one is around but me. And he's going to show that he's the supreme. This day, every soul will be recompensed for what it earned. No injustice today. Indeed, Allah is swift in account and warn them, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, of the approaching day when hearts are at the throats filled with distress for the wrongdoers there will be no devoted friend and no intercessor who is obeyed he knows that which deceives the eyes and what the breasts conceal and allah judges with truth while those they invoke besides him judge not with anything indeed allah he is the hearing and, uh, and the seeing have they not traveled through the land and observed how was the end of those who were before them? They were greater than them in strength and in impression on the land. Meaning they did they did greater things, right? Especially like when we look at um, architectural history or we look uh, deep into uh, the past, we are mesmerized by the things that were accomplished. We were just like, how did they do these things, right? And with the little tools that they had. Uh, but Allah sees them for their sins, and they had not from Allah any protector. That was because their messengers were coming to them with clear proofs, but they disbelieved, so Allah sees them. Indeed, he is powerful and severe in punishment. And we did certainly send Moses with our signs and a clear authority to Pharaoh, Haman, and Harun. But they said he is a magician and a liar. And when he brought them the truth from us, they said, kill the sons of those who have believed with him and keep their women alive. But the plan of the disbelievers is not except in error. And Pharaoh said, let me kill Moses and let me call upon his Lord. Indeed, I fear that he will change your religion or that he will cause corruption in the land. 
But Moses said, Indeed, I have sought refuge in my Lord and your Lord from every arrogant one who does not believe in the day of accounts. And a believing man from the family of Pharaoh who concealed his faith said, Do you kill a man merely because he says, My Lord is Allah, while he has brought you clear proofs from your Lord? And if he should be lying, then upon him is the consequence of his lie. But if he should be truthful, there will strike you some of what he promises you. Indeed, Allah does not guide one who is a transgressor and a liar. Definitely worth checking out the tafsir here. So let's go ahead and locate it really quickly because, uh, again, we have an unnamed individual who uh, seems to be leaning towards belief. And there's usually lessons learned from these types of interactions. And notice the, the gamble that's being made by Pharaoh, right? Uh, what, a, what a stupid, stupid gamble that's being made. Okay. So here we go. <clears throat> um, Musa said when Pharaoh spoke those reprehensible words to which his arrogance led him and he felt proud of his power and ability, Musa said, seeking the help of his Lord. I seek refuge with my Lord and your Lord. That is, I seek protection in his Lordship by which he is in control of all things. From every arrogant person who does not believe in the day of reckoning, that is, whose arrogance and lack of belief in the day of reckoning prompt him to commit evil and spread corruption. That includes Pharaoh and others. By his kindness, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected Musa from all arrogant people who did not believe in the day of reckoning. And he made available to him the means by which the evil of Pharaoh and his chiefs was warded off from him. One of these means was this believing man who was from the family of Pharaoh, a member of the royal household who must have had some influence, especially, especially since he acted as if he was in agreement with them and he concealed his faith because they were accustomed to showing respect to him in a manner that they would not do if he openly disagreed with them. Similarly, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protected his messenger Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam from Quraysh by means of his paternal uncle Abu Talib. Because Abu Talib was held in high esteem by them, and he followed the same religion as them, meaning the Quraysh, if he had been Muslim, he would not have been able to protect him in that manner. That wise, prudent, guided, believing man said, criticizing the actions of his people and highlighting the abhorrent nature of what they decided to do. Would you kill a man merely because he says, my Lord is Allah? That is, how can you regard it as a permissible as permissible to kill him when all he has done is to say, my Lord is Allah. And he did not merely say words without presenting proof. Hence, he said, even though he has come to you with clear signs from your Lord, because his proof was well known to them all, young and old alike. In other words, such a man does not deserve to be killed. So before you do that, why do you not try to prove that what he brought of truth is wrong and respond to his proof with proof of your own to refute it? Then after that, you can see whether he deserves to be killed after you defeat him in argument or not. But as his argument is well-founded and his proof is very clear, then there is no way that it could be permissible to kill him. So here we have somebody utilizing their logic and their reason rather than just their um, the brash form of disbelief. Then he presented to them a rational argument that could convince any ras rational person, no matter how you look at it. And he said, if he is lying, he will suffer the consequences of his lie. But if he is telling the truth, some of that punishment of which he warns you will befall you. That is, Musa can only be one of two things. Either he is lying in his claim or he is telling the truth. If he is lying, then he is the only one who will suffer the consequences and he is only harming himself and will not be harmed by his lie. Uh, and you will not be harmed by his lie because you did not accept his call or believe it. But if he is telling the truth and has come to you with clear signs and has told you that if you do not respond, Allah will punish you in this world and in the hereafter, then some of that which he warns you must inevitably befall you which is punishment in this world. Because of his mature thinking and his subtle attempts to protect Musa, this man came up with this response 
that would not cause any confusion to the people. And he presented the case of Musa as being one of two things, stating that in either case, killing him would be foolish and ignorance on their part. Then he, may Allah be pleased with him and make him pleased and may for, uh, forgive him and have mercy on him, moved on to a matter that was more sublime and explained how close Musa was to the truth. As he said, verily Allah does not guide the lying transgressors. That is the one who oversteps the mark by shunning the truth and turning to falsehood, who lies by blaming his transgression on Allah and saying that he told him to do it. Allah will not guide such a person to the right path, either in what he is trying to achieve or in his argument for what he is doing, and he will not be guided to the straight path. In other words, you have seen what Musa calls you to of the truth and how Allah helped him to call people to the truth and present rational proof and divinely granted miracles to support it. The one who is guided in this manner cannot be a transgressor or a liar. This is indicative of his knowledge, reason, and knowledge of his Lord. Then he warned and advised his people, alerted them to the punishment of the hereafter, and told them not to be deceived by what they had of power and dominion. As he said, O oh my people, you have dominion today that is in this world and are prevailing in the land over your subjects, controlling them as you wish. But assume that you achieve what you what you want of killing Musa, which is not going to happen. Who will save us from the punishment of Allah if it comes upon us? This is indicative of this man's smartness <clears throat> in debating with his people. As he describes it as something that he had in common with them, saying, who will save us if it comes upon us? This was in order to make them understand that he was as sincere towards them as he was to himself, and that he wanted for them what he wanted for himself. Pharaoh said, objecting to that and trying to deceive his people lest they follow Musa, I am only telling you what I think is right, and I am only guiding you to the correct path. He spoke the truth when he said, I am only telling you what I think is right. But what was it that he thought was right? He thought that what was right was to think of his people as foolish and that they should follow him so that he could be their leader, even though he did not think that he was in the right. Rather, he thought that Musa was in the right, but denied it even though he was certain that it was the truth. However, he was lying when he said, and I am only guiding you to the correct path. Because that was the opposite of the truth. If he had only instructed them to follow him in his disbelief and misguidance, his evil would have been less. But he instructed them to follow him and claimed that by doing so, they would be following the truth and that if they actually follow the truth, they would be following misguidance. Okay, so pretty profound points over here. And ironically, Pharaoh is the one that's, that is committing the, the, the crime. I mean, obviously, but uh, notice how he's committing the crime. He is an actual kafar. He is someone that is concealing the truth. So he knew the truth. He saw the proof. He saw the evidences. But he concealed the truth by saying that I'm the one that's taking you to guidance and he's the one taking you to falsehood, even though that he saw all these overwhelming evidences. So subhanAllah, this is like the exact definition of kufr, right? Knowing the truth and still taking people with you. And notice what Asadi does. He says, had Pharaoh would have presented the problem more honestly, he only would have been responsible for himself. But because Pharaoh concealed the truth, now he drug everyone in, uh, else in with him that chose to believe in him, obviously, because everybody else had their own uh, rational and reasoning faculties to use to come to their own conclusion. So imagine how many people are doing that today where they are misguiding people by concealing uh, their own limitations and saying, hey, you know what? I think I have the answer and I'm going to go ahead and go with it. So follow me. Don't follow the actual truth. Okay, wonderful. Uh, and he who believed said, O oh my people, indeed I fear for you a fate like the day of, of the companies, like the custom of the people of Noah and of Ad and Thamud and those after them, and Allah wants no injustice for his servants. And O oh my people, indeed I fear for you the day of calling. 
The day you will turn your backs fleeing, there is not for you from Allah any protector. And whoever Allah sends astray, there is not for him any guide. And Joseph had already come to you before with clear proofs, but you remained in doubt of that which he brought to you. Until when he died, you said, never will Allah send a messenger after him. Thus does Allah leave astray he who is a transgressor and a skeptic. I think this is like the first time that there is a translation of a skeptic. So that's, that's pretty cool. Those who dispute concerning the signs of Allah without any authority have come to them. Uh, having come to them, great is hatred of them in the sight of Allah and in the sight of those who have believed. Um, so this is pretty uh, profound because uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is basically saying that if you argue without actually having knowledge, especially of the unseen, of either through forms of revelation or prophethood or anything like that, uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has a great hatred for you. Thus does Allah seal over every heart belonging to an arrogant tyrant. And you don't have to have like a kingdom to be a tyrant. You can just be a, you can be like an independent tyrant where you're following your own desires and you're just impacting yourself, right? And Pharaoh said, O oh, Haman, construct for me a tower that I might reach the ways, the ways into the heavens, so that I may look at the deity of Moses, but indeed I think he is a liar. And thus was made attractive to Pharaoh the evil of his deeds, and he was averted from the right way. And the plan of Pharaoh was not except in ruin. And he who believed said, O oh, my people, follow me. I will guide you to the way of right conduct. O oh, my people, this worldly life is only temporary enjoyment. And indeed, the hereafter, that is the home of permanent settlement. Whoever does an evil deed will not be recompensed except by the like thereof. But whoever does righteousness, whether male or female, while he is a believer, those will enter paradise being given provision therein without account. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, make us of those that uh, reach Jannah without account because uh, that's the easiest way, right? And oh, my people, how is it that I invite you to salvation while you invite me to the fire? You invite me to disbelieve in Allah and associate with him that of which I have no knowledge, and I invite you to the exalted in might, the perpetual forgiver. Assuredly, that to which you invite me has no response to a supplication in this world or in the hereafter. And indeed, our return uh, to Allah is to Allah, and indeed the transgressors will be companions of the fire. And you will remember what I now say to you, and I entrust my affair to Allah. Indeed, Allah is seeing, seeing of his servants. So Allah protected him from the evils they plotted, and the people of Pharaoh were enveloped by the worst of punishments. The fire, they are exposed to it morning and evening. And the, the day the hour appears, it will be said, make the people of Pharaoh enter the severest punishment. And mention when they will argue within the fire, and the weak will say to those who had been arrogant, Indeed, we were only your followers, so will you relieve us of a share of the fire? Those who had been arrogant will say, Indeed, all of us are in it. Indeed, Allah has judged between the servants. <clears throat> and those in the fire will say to the keepers of hell, Supplicate your Lord to lighten for us a day from the punishment. They will say, <clears throat> so the angels are going to respond here at this point. Uh, they will say, did there not come to you your messengers with clear proofs? They will say, yes. They will reply, then supplicate yourselves. But the supplication of the disbelievers is not except an error, meaning futility. Uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protect us from that state. Indeed, he will support our messengers and those who believe during the life of this world and on the day when the witnesses will stand. The day their excuses will not benefit the wrongdoers and they will have the curse and they will have the worst home, i.e. hellfire. And we had certainly given Moses guidance and we caused the children of Israel to inherit the scripture. As guidance and as a reminder, uh, excuse me, as guidance and a reminder for those of understanding. So be patient, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Indeed, the promise of Allah is true and ask forgiveness for your sin. 
and exalt Allah with praise of your Lord in the evening and the morning. Indeed, those who dispute concerning the signs of Allah without any evidence have come to them, uh, evidence having come to them, there is not within their breasts except pride, the extent of which they cannot reach. So seek refuge in Allah. Indeed, it is he who is the hearing, the seeing. So we see that disbelievers also have a sense of pride, especially the ones that are argumentative and that are not upon knowledge. The creation of the heavens and the earth is greater than the creation of mankind, but most of the people do not know. And not equal are the blind and the seeing, nor are those who believe and do righteous deeds and the evildoer. Little do you remember. Indeed, the hour is coming, no doubt about it, but most of the people do not believe. And your Lord says, call upon me, I will respond to you. Indeed, those who disdain my worship will enter hell, rendered contemptible. It is Allah who made for you the night that you may rest therein and the day giving sight. Indeed, Allah is the possessor of bounty for the people, but most of them are not grateful. That is Allah, your Lord, creator of all things. There is no deity except him. So how are you deluded? Thus were those before you deluded who were rejecting the signs of Allah. It is Allah who made for you the earth a place of settlement and the sky a structure, i.e. a ceiling, and formed you and perfected your forms and provided you with good things. That is Allah your Lord. Then blessed is Allah, Lord of the worlds. He is the ever living. There is no deity except him. So call upon him being sincere to him in religion all praise is due to Allah, Lord of the worlds. Say, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, Indeed, I have been forbidden to worship those you call upon besides Allah, once the clear proofs have come to me from my Lord, and I have been commanded to submit to the Lord of the worlds. It is he who created you from dust, then from a sperm drop, then from a clinging clot. Then he brings you out as a child. Then he develops you that you reach your time of maturity. Then further that you become elders. And among you is he who is taken in death before that so that you reach a specified term and perhaps you will use reason. He it is who gives life and causes death, and when he decrees a matter, he but says to it be, and it is. Do you not consider those who dispute concerning the signs of Allah? How are they averted? Those who deny the book, i.e. the Qur'an, and that with which we sent our messengers, they are going to know. When the shackles are around their necks and the chains, they will be dragged in boiling water, then in the fire they will be filled with flame. Then it will be said to them, Where is that which you used to associate with him in worship? Other than Allah, they will say they have departed from us. Rather, we did not used to invoke previously anything. Thus does Allah put astray the disbelievers. The angels will say that was because you used to exult upon the earth without right, and you used to behave insolently. Enter the gates of hell to abide eternally therein, and wretched is the residence of the arrogant. So be patient, O Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Indeed, the promise of Allah is truth. And whether we show you some of what we have promised them, or we take you in death, it is to us they will be returned. And we have already sent messengers before you. Among them are those whose stories we have related to you, and among them are those whose stories we have not related to you. And it was not for any messenger to bring a sign or verse except by per permission of Allah. So when the command of Allah comes, it will be concluded, i.e. judged in truth, and the falsifiers will thereupon lose all. It is Allah who made for you the grazing animals upon which you ride, and some of them you eat. And for you therein are other benefits, and that you may realize upon them a need which is your breasts. And upon them and upon ships you are carried. And he shows you his signs. So which of the signs of Allah do you deny? Have they not traveled through the land and observed how was the end of those before them? 
They were more numerous than themselves and greater in strength and impression on the land, but they were not availed by what they used to earn. And when their messengers came to them with clear proofs, they merely rejoiced in what they had of knowledge, but they were enveloped by what they used to ridicule. And when they saw our punishment, they said, we believe in Allah alone and disbelieve in that which we used to associate with him. But never did their faith benefit them once they saw our punishment. It is the established way of Allah, which has proceeded among his servants and the disbelievers thereupon lost all. So, you know, there is a time when it's just too late, right? All this time is given, all this freedom is given. But um, once the, the reaping happens, once the summoning back to the Lord happens, it's too late. Uh, Surah Al-Fusilat, <clears throat> Bismillah ar-Rahman ar-Rahim, Hamim. This is a revelation from the entirely merciful, the especially merciful, a book whose verses have been detailed in Arabic Quran for a people who know. As a giver of good tidings and a warner, but most of them turn away so they do not hear. And they say, our hearts are within coverings, i.e. screen from that to which you invite us. And in our ears is deafness, and between us and you is a partition, so work. Uh, indeed, we are working. Say, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, I am only a man like you to whom it has been revealed that your God is but one God. So take a straight course to him and seek his forgiveness and woe to those who associate others with Allah, those who do not give zakah, and in the hereafter, they are disbelievers. So they're not charitable people, and uh, they have no interest in the hereafter. Indeed, those who believe and do righteous deeds for them is a reward uninterrupted. Say, do you indeed disbelieve in he who has created the earth in two days and attribute to him equals? That is the Lord of the worlds. And he placed on it, i.e. the earth, firmly set mountains over its surface, and he blessed it and determined therein its creatures, sustenance in four days without distinction for the information of those who ask. Then he directed himself to the heavens while it was smoke and said to it and to the earth, come into being willingly or by compulsion. They said, we have come willingly. And he completed them as seven heavens within two days and inspired, i.e. made known each heaven, its command. And we adorned the nearest heaven with lamps, i.e. stars for beauty and as protection. That is the determination of the exalted in might, the knowing. But if they turn away, then say, I have warned you of a thunderbolt like the thunderbolt that struck Ad and Thamud. That occurred when the messenger had come to them before them and after them saying worship only except uh, worship not except allah they said if our lord had willed he would have sent down the angels so indeed we in that which you have been sent are disbelievers and as for ad they were arrogant upon the earth without right and said who is greater than us in strength did they, uh, did they not consider that Allah who created them was greater than them in strength? But they were rejecting our signs. So we sent upon them a screaming wind during days of misfortune to make them taste the punishment of disgrace in the worldly life. But the punishment of the hereafter is more disgracing and they will not be helped. And as for Thamud, we guided them, but they preferred blindness over guidance. So the thunderbolt of humiliation, uh, the thunderbolt of humiliating punishment seized them for what they used to earn. And we saved those who believed and used to fear Allah and mention, O Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, the day when the enemies of Allah will be gathered to the fire while they are driven, assembled in rows until when they reach it, their hearing and their eyes and their skins will testify against them of what they used to do. And they will say to their skins, why have you testified against us? They will say, we were made to speak by Allah who has made everything speak. And he created you the first time and to him you are returned. And you were not covering, i.e. protecting yourselves, lest your hearing testify against you 
or your sight or your skin, but you assume that Allah does not know much of what you do. And that was your and that was your assumption, which you assumed about your Lord. It has brought you to ruin and you have become among the losers. So even if they are patient, the fire is a residence for them. And if they ask to appease Allah, they will not be of those who are allowed to appease. And we appointed for them companions who made attractive to them what was before them and what was behind them of sin. And the word, i.e. decree, has come into effect upon them among nations, which has which had passed on before them of jinn and man. Indeed, they all were losers. And those who disbelieve say, do not listen to this Quran and speak noisily during the recitation of it, that perhaps you will overcome. So they're trying to drown out the sound of the Quran. They will surely cause those who disbelieve to taste the severe punishment, and we will surely recompense them for the worst of what they have been doing. That is the recompense of the enemies of Allah, the fire. For them, therein is the home of eternity as recompense for what they, of our verses, were rejecting. And those who disbelieved will then say, Our Lord, show us those who misled us of the jinn and men, so we may put them under our feet, and that, that they will be among the lowest. Now notice here, it says, misled us of the jinn and men, right? Because there's people that are communicating with the other, other uh, realm, right? Which obviously is forbidden, okay? So these, these people that they, these jinn kind and stuff that people took for lords and uh, took for some form of guidance, is just stupid. Indeed, those who have said our Lord is Allah and then remained on a right course, the angels will descend upon them saying, do not fear and do not grieve, but receive good tidings of paradise, which you were promised. We angels were your allies in worldly life and are so in the hereafter. And you will have therein whatever your soul desires. And you will have therein whatever you request or wish, or, or wish as accommodation from a Lord who is forgiving and merciful. And who is better in speech than one who invites to Allah and does righteousness and says, Indeed, I am of the Muslims. And not equal are the good deed and the bad. Repel evil by that by that deed which is better, and thereupon the one whom between you and him is enmity will become as though he was a devoted friend. But none is granted it except those who are patient, and none is granted it except one having a portion of good. So there's prerequisites to this stuff, right? You have to be patient, you have to do good, you have to treat others with kindness, you have to invite people to good, you have to replace bad with good, right? So uh, may Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala make us of those that conduct those good actions. And if there comes to you from Satan an evil suggestion, then seek refuge in Allah. Indeed, he is the hearing, the knowing. And of his signs are the night and the day and the sun and the moon. Do not prostrate to the sun or to the moon, but prostrate to Allah who created them. If it should be him that you worship. Uh, now, very cool here. <laughs> Very cool how it states here that um, prostrates to a prostrate to a lot if it should be him that you worship, right? But if they are arrogant, then those who are near your Lord, i.e. the angels, exalt him by night and day, and they do not become weary. Okay. And of his signs is that you see the earth stilled, but when you but when we send down upon it rain, it quivers and grows. Indeed, he has given it life as the giver of life to the dead. Indeed, he is over all things competent. Indeed, those who inject deviation into our verses are not concealed from us. So is he who is cast into the fire better, or is he who becomes secure on the day of resurrection? Do whatever you will. Indeed, he is seeing of what you do. Uh, worth visiting the tafsir over here. So let me try to quickly locate uh, verse number 40. And uh, here we are. 
All right. So here as uh, here's what Asadi has to say. He says, the phrase translated here as distort the meanings of the revelations of Allah means not responding to them in the proper manner in any way, either by denying them, rejecting them, and disbelieving in the one who brought them, or by distorting them and twisting the meaning and trying to give them meanings that Allah never intended. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala warns those who distort the meaning of the revelations that they are not hidden from him. Rather, he is aware of their outward actions and inner thoughts, and he will requit them for their distortion in a way that matches their deeds. Hence, Allah says, is one who will be thrown into the fire, such as the one who distorts the meaning of Allah's revelation, better or one who will uh, or one who will come safe on the day of resurrection. That is, he will be safe from the punishment of Allah and will deserve his reward. It is well known that the latter is better. Having clarified the differences between truth and falsehood, the path that saves from his punishment and the path that leads to doom, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala now says, do whatever you wish. If you wish, follow the path of guidance that leads to the pleasure of your Lord and his paradise, or if you wish, follow the path of misguidance that incurs the wrath of your Lord and leads to the abode of doom. I mean, again, subhanAllah, there's there's no compulsion in religion uh, in the in the in the uh, Islamic religion, right? And uh, I love how he basically says, do whatever you will, right? And I know exactly what the outcome is, so the choice is yours, right? Uh, alhamdulillah, very good explanation by Asadi. Indeed, those who disbelieve in the message, i.e. the Quran, after it has come to them, and indeed, it is a mighty book. Falsehood cannot approach it from before it or from behind it. It is a revelation from a Lord who is wise and praiseworthy. Now, this is amazing, right? Basically, falsehood can't get anywhere near this book. Rather, it's people's own psychology that's reflected back at them, uh, which is why I absolutely love the Quran, because it really just penetrates straight through uh, anybody's intentions. Um, now, let's see what... Uh, what Asadi says here. Then Allah says, those who reject the reminder, that is those who reject the Holy Quran in which reminds people of everything that is in their best interest in spiritual terms and in this world and in the hereafter and raises its status, those who follow it. Uh, when it comes to them as a blessing from their Lord at the hands of the best and most perfect of humankind will be requited for their rejection. Verily it, in fact, is an unassailable book that combines all the characteristics of perfection and is protected from everyone who wants to distort it or who intends ill towards it. Hence, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, no falsehood can approach it from before it or from behind it. That is, none of the devils among humankind or the jinn can come near it to detract from it or insert anything into it that is not part of it or to add anything to it or subtract anything from it. It was protected, protected as it was being revealed, and its words and meanings are protected. The, um, the one who sent it down has guaranteed to preserve it, as he says elsewhere, Verily it is we who have sent down the reminder, the Qur'an, and verily it is we who will preserve it. And that's in Surah Al-Hijr, chapter 15, verse 9. Uh, wonderful. Uh, absolutely wonderful. Nothing is said to you, O Muhammad sallallahu alaihi wasallam, except what was already said to the messengers before you. Indeed, your Lord is a possessor of forgiveness and a possessor of painful penalty. And if we had made it a foreign, i.e., non-Arabic Quran, they would have said, "Why are its verses not explained in detail in our language? Is it a foreign recitation and an Arab messenger and an Arab messenger?" say it is for those who believe a guidance and a cure and those who do not believe in their ear is deafness and it is upon them blindness those are being called from a distant place and we had already given moses the scripture but it came under disagreement and if not for a word i.e decree that proceeded from your lord it would have been concluded between them and indeed they are concerning it, i.e. the Qur'an, in disquieting doubt. 
Whoever does righteousness, it is for his own soul, and whoever does evil does so against it, and your Lord is not ever unjust to his servants. Alhamdulillah, so this does conclude the 24th juz. I just want to finish the reading by saying, Ashhadu an la ilaha illallah wa ashhadu anna Muhammadan rasulullah. Allahumma salli ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Muhammad kama sallaita ala Ibrahim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Ibrahim fil alamin innaka Hamidun Majid. Allahumma barik ala sayyidina wa habibina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Muhammad kama barakta ala Ibrahim wa ala alihi wa sahbihi Ibrahim fil alamin innaka Hamidun Majid.